Hi everyone, in the next 15 minutes, I will introduce Donna, a tool to make anonymous voice calls over Tor. This is a joint work with David Bromberg, David Effray, Etienne Rivière and me, Quentin Dufour. We started this work because we observed that Tor is poorly suited for interactive applications like voice calling. It's mainly due to its high latency, and as an example, you can notice the high latency gap between uh, these two speed tests that are done with and without Tor. However, the preview speed test service is not adapted to describe VoIP requirements as it provides only an average run trip time while we want to cap the maximum one-way delay. So based on the International Telecommunication Union standards, we can derive that 99% of the network packets must be delivered in less than 360 milliseconds during a call. As we have no user band base, we also plan to simulate calls, and so we need to know to have some input on their duration. So based on a real-world dataset, we know that an average call lasts 5 minutes, while long-lasting la long one lasts up to 90 minutes. So based on these preliminary definitions, we define our requirements for our whole system. We want at least 80% of interactive calls, less than 2% of dropped calls, and we want anonymity for both the caller and the Kali. So now, let's see if Tor satisfies these requirements. So, considering anonymity, Tor has been designed for web browsing, and thus protects only uh, the client and not the web browser. So in other words, it has only a one-way anonymity. Thankfully, it has, it has also a feature named Onion Services that provide two-way anonymity by connecting two Tor secrets to the, together, one created by the caller and one created by the Kali. And in the following, I will use the term link to refer to the complete, uh, complete path between the caller and the Kali. So currently, this link is made of six relays which is a lot for an interactive application and with, it will have a negative impact on latency. But thanks to Bauer et al, we know that two op circuits instead of two, three op one do not break Tor's security model. So by considering these optimizations, we uh, can also consider two-way anonymity with only four relays. So as a conclusion, in the following, we will evaluate two Tor configuration a default one and an optimized one. So now that we have our two Tor configuration, we will simulate calls on them. And more specifically, we will simulate 64 5 minute calls and 64 90 minute calls. And we want to see if Tor can satisfy our interactivity and stability requirements that we defined earlier. We start by reviewing the results for the default Tor configurations with six relays. Here, we consider only the interactivity of the call, not the stability. So we run 64 five minute calls that we plotted in red and 64 90 minute calls we plotted in blue. For each call, we keep only the 99th percentile one way delay and we plot this one-way delay on the x-axis. On the y-axis, we have the empirical cumulative distribution of these 64 calls. We recall that this latency must be below 360 milliseconds for a call to be considered interactive. And we put this threshold in purple on the graph. Our final goal is to have at least 80% of interactive calls but we clearly see that we are very far of this target on the plot, with respectively 9% and 3% of interactive calls for the 5 minute and 90 minute calls. So as a conclusion, with this configuration, calls are definitely not interactive. So now we replace the same experiment, but with our optimized Tor configuration that is made on, of only four relays. We can clearly see that we have better results, 
so respectively 44 and 20 plus and 23 percent of interactive calls for the five minute and 90 minute calls but at the same time this re these results are still far below our 80 percent target so even with our optimized configurations calls are still not interactive so now that we have discussed interactivity, we focus on our stability requirements. And this time we evaluate our two tour configuration at once. So the default configuration is plotted in blue and the optimized one is plotted in red. And on the plot, what we do is that what we is we aggregate the percentage of failed calls, so on the y axis, over time, so on the x axis. And we, call, we recall that in work, we consider two specific call directions, five minutes, which will be uh, more on the left part of the graph, and 90 minutes, we, which is on the right part of the graph. And we observe that very quickly, an important number of calls are failing. And we, quick, we very quickly cross our 2% thresholds of failed calls. So as a result, after five minutes, we have already 5% of interrupted calls for our optimized tour configuration. And after 90 minutes, this value is 10%. If we consider the default tour configurations, the results are even worse. So in the end, for both tour configurations, calls are not stable. So based on these observations, we designed a system that provides the required stability and interactivity for anonymous calls. So more specifically, our goal is to build an abstraction over the existing Tor network that will deliver VoIP packet on time. And we put a huge emphasis on reusing the existing software and infrastructure. In practice, our system is a proxy that sits between the VoIP client and the Tor client on the user side. So the VoIP client sends UDP packets to donors that will schedule them on multiple Tor links through the Tor client. And inside the proxy, we implemented our multipass logic in two components, link selection and scheduling policies. So let's, let's start with the link selection component. Its goal is to detect and avoid temporary slow links. It works by continuously monitoring received packets to infer a differential one-way delay. Indeed, we can't measure the raw one-way delay in a real call, but we can know how much faster is a link compared to another one. And this is the uh, differential one-way delay. Every second, thanks to this differential one-way delay, a ranking is computed and sent back to the source. So Bob is computing uh, the ranking and sending it back to Alice. And she will be ab able to adapt uh, its link selection. So the full algorithm is a bit more complex as we must take into account that sending data on a link impacts its latency and more details are provided in the paper. The link selection component can only uh, react to latency spikes, but not anticipate them, and it is required for VoIP to have interactive calls. And VoIP uh, software often have two uh, methods for anticipations, dropping missing packets and sending redundancy. But because Tor forces in-order delivery of the packets, we can use none of these methods in a single pass design. But thanks to our multipath design, we can break this in-order delivery by carefully scheduling contiguous packets on different links. And it makes possible dropping and redundancy. So in terms of redundancy, alternate piggyback the previous packet on each new one. And because VoIP packets are small, but Tor has fixed size packets, this method does not send additional data on the network. In fact, instead of sending, uh, instead of padding packets with random data, we send redundancy. But for some extreme cases, the alternate policy does not send enough redundancy. And this is why we propose double send as an alternate extension. This time, we allow ourselves to send more data on the network. For each UDP packet received, 
Donna will send two TCP packets. In the end, the destination receives each VoIP packet four times on four different links. And as long as at least one of these four links is not experiencing latency issues, data will be delivered on time. We also evaluated the security impact of introducing a multipath design. The major concern being that opening more links would lead, would lead to a higher probability of de-anonymization. But years ago, the Tor project introduced the concept of guards to decouple links opening from de-anonymization de probability. It works by having two relays picked once and for all by the client. They are named guards and they will be used for all circuits. In the paper, we discuss other security aspects like the impact of the application protocol, which is in our case VoIP and instead of the traditional web protocols. So now that we have defined Donar, we want to evaluate it. And for the evaluation, we keep the same requirements and methodology as our preliminary analysis. The single pass approach evaluated earlier is now, is now one of our baseline. We refer to it as simple. We also evaluate a two-link naive multipass approach implemented in the software named Torphone. This is our second baseline. And finally, we evaluate our contribution, split in two variants, Donar Alternate and Donar Double Send, according to its scheduling policy. We start this evaluation with the optimized Tor configuration, so the two op circuit. We focus on the interactiveness here. Like before, Donar variants are in red and grid on the plot, and our baseline are in blue and purple. We see very different patterns between our contribution and the baselines. Donar meets the goal of at least 80% of interactive calls for its two variants, with 87% and 95% of interactive call. Conversely, the baselines are far below, including the naive multipass of Torfon. So as a conclusion, with the optimized Tor configurations, both variants of Donar work, while the baselines don't. We continue with the default Tor configuration. The, major, the, major, the major difference this time is that Donar Alternate does not, does not match or 80% requirements by providing only 58% of interactive calls. Donar Double Sense, however, with its 87% of interactive call, is the only good fit for this configuration. With 31% of interactive calls, Torphone is far from more requirements, but it seems less impacted than our simple baseline that drops to 3% with this Tor configuration. As a conclusion, with the default Tor configuration, only Donar Double Sun works. Finally, we focus on the stability. The first observation is that when a, Dover, when a Donar variant matches its interactivity requirements, it has 0% of interrupted calls. Donar Alternate, with the default configuration, has 2% of interrupted calls, which is exactly our threshold. But earlier, we said that we should avoid it due to its interactivity issues. Finally, our baselines, including Torphone, are way above our thresholds, and we should not consider them in terms of stability. In the end, Donar provides enough stability to match our requirements. So, now let's conclude. With Donar, we contributed first foundation to build a Tor soft phone with stable latency over the existing Tor network, and the source code is available on GitHub. And second, we also contributed some insights to better understand delays on Tor from a real-time perspective. So this is the end of this talk. Thanks to the audience for attending it. You can reach us through our email addresses. And now I will be happy to answer your questions. Thanks again.